everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And today I'm going to show you how you can paint in acrylic at home a reproduction of Clarence Gagnon's beautiful winter train scene. He's a Canadian Impressionist, and I really wanted to do this because it's just everything about this really called to me and I thought you might enjoy painting as well. Now I'm going to break it down step by step. I'm going to tell you everything I'm using, every technique. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that you can see the colors that I'm mixing and the tools that I'm using and the brushes that I have going on. Now, if you are here because you love the Canadian Impressionists and you're hoping for a historic reproduction of this painting, um, I'm cool and I'm awesome as you can tell by hair and shirt, but this is not that video. <laughs> <laughs> so don't feel like you need to tell me that these are not the colors the impressionist used because I too went to art school and know that but they're one I'm using today and uh, <laughs> these, and these it's gonna also, work <laughs> these are also not the hair colors the impressionist used mm -mm. so mm -mm. we think we're on the right you know. Yeah, we're, we're where we need to okay. be. Yeah. So, but it, there are some channels that do some incredible stuff. I, I, I meant to find a name of a really good one that does it, that they really reproduce things historically accurately um, and get you into that. And if you're looking for that, that's a search that you can do on YouTube and those resources are out there. This is more about taking acrylic paint in our weekly palette and reproducing a famous painting using those tools that we just have around the studio. Hmm. Want to go over See. what those would be? Oh, sure. I'm actually was about to play with your color key because you look so cute, but your your um, green shirt threw me for a little bit. Oh, blue. my gosh. So John's like, what color is your shirt? And I'm like, black. And he's like, what color is your shirt? I'm like, it's I Baby Yoda. <gasps> Baby Yoda's green. <laughs> <laughs> and where, where are I'm we? Not, I'm not calling him the name they gave him. I'm not doing that. I know what it is also. Just like I know the colors and I, I know we're gonna... I, Grogu is just not going to be what we're doing today. We're in a Just, grown, green screen studio is where we are. Yeah, it's where we are. Look, my arm is gone. What is happening over here? <laughs> oh, because I uh, I cropped that off because over here, look, uh, where'd it go? Oh, because my brushes show? Yeah. Is it weirder to just lose it my is. arm? Okay. Whoosh. I don't know. There's just half a sharp. Yeah, that's all you really need. Okay, let's go okay, over what we're brushes. using. I'll leave your brushes. So I'm going to do this on a 9 by 12 It's what I have in the studio. And I'm going to use my regular weekly palette colors. I'm going to use Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Quinacridone Magenta, Thalo Blue, Mars Black, and Titanium White. Several of these were not even available to Impressionists. And if you're in Canada, you can actually go see this collection, which is really stunning. Um, and we're able to do this because this is in the public domain. Uh, and so you can reproduce famous old paintings. What you cannot do is pretend you're the artist and sell it as if it's an original. So what you're doing is a reproduction. Mm -hmm. uh, very different than worrying about copyright in modern terms. Um, and I just want to say that because sometimes, you know, when you're new, you don't know. How is that different? There. How is it different? That's how it's different. It's a reproduction. And it's like even good form to say who the artist was that you're reproducing, like somewhere in the canvas on the back or something. So if you did a Renoir, you put you know, reproduced by Renoir, and what painting it was you were doing. Um, I have the name of the artist and the painting name in the description, but my French is... Mm. <laughs> I think when we were in France, they said... Come see, come see. It, uh, you speak like a peasant. I, I think, was, was told I that. Was... I was told that. But here's what. I have not practiced in a while, and as you know, you have to practice a language all the time. So we do have uh, this reference. You can find this reference online in a variety of places. Um, and I think we're going to break this down in steps. Do everything that we usually do. I think the steps are important. So people know this isn't just couples therapy for you and I live. <laughs> Join us for art and couples therapy. So don't worry, we will never do that to you. What we're going to start out with is we are going to begin sketching in the landscape a little bit. And I'm going to just use, say, um, actually, you know what? No, I don't. We're going to start with a colored ground. Are we? Mm-hmm. What color? Well, I'll tell you in a second. What's a colored ground? A colored ground is a solid color that we work from. I, this is nice to do in Impressionism. Often canvases were toned in impressionism because it allowed uh, the canvas to come through and it allowed you to paint looser without having to see the white underneath. Okay. And I think I'm going to do a blue. Hmm. I'm going to do a Whoa. kind of a blue gray. That's interesting. Oh, you that's a dog. Hold on. Um, you, you do this. I'm going to back. A dog got stuck? 
<laughs> so I'm going to make this sort of gray blue. This is my burnt sienna and my ultramarine and together they make kind of a gray blue. And this color is really represented through the surface. So I'm going to just put it across here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be streaky. Again, this is just a colored ground. And it does make a big improvement to the look of your work if you're painting abstract or uh, impressionistically. Sometimes you can just wipe it out with a rag too. So notice that I'm not even, not even that worried about it. Can you mix abstract and impressionism? Mm-hmm. You can do anything you want. This is art. Seriously, we just sold a digital sketch for millions of dollars at Christie's. <laughs> so here's the, what that means to you. Just do whatever you like. Yeah. Do whatever you like. Not that I resent that for that artist at all. I think that's wonderful whenever artists make money. And uh, however that's happening is great. I'm just saying that does make it so that I don't have to worry about it. I would say that uh, do your research on NFTs. Don't do NFTs. <laughs> um, it's, I, you, I, okay, you can buy it if Christie sells it. That's a pretty good investment. Well, I would say even before there, I would look into the history of tulips and how the tulip economy came and went. And then rethink NFTs. Well, uh, the reason they're doing that is because Christie's is trying to establish a solid value for the artwork outside of whatever's going on with cryptocurrency. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm sure that they will work on that. <laughs> John does not have faith. All right. I understand the infrastructure on which the cryptocurrency runs. You can see what I've done is just kind of create a color instead of a white background. It is a color. It's a wintry color. It's altering blue. It's burnt sienna. It's loosely painted out. It doesn't have to be even. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be streaky. It just gives you a start. Um, if you have a bunch of Holbein gesso around, you could go grab probably this color in one of the 30 million colors of Holbein gesso that there are um, in whatever grit you like. But we made it with this paint, which is perfect. And we're going to dry it before we do the next part. All right. And yeah, just thoroughly dry the surface. Make sure that um, that way it's not sticky, tacky, or otherwise non-optimal. So you use low heat because heat can make the acrylic soft and tacky. You can also do some things called color shift on your more economic paints. Not really as much a big deal on your more, uh, you know, sort of uh, premium paints, if you will. Um, so anyway. Don't use heat. Heat's bad. Check out our website, theartsherpa.com, for more information, including all the stuff that we keep secret, like free traceables, free references, free mini books, um, a lot of free stuff. We do. Free stuff. What are like, we saying? We give them lots of secret free stuff on the website. Yeah. We try to provide you with as many resources for students as we can. The mini books are this year. I, I think we produced, like, I don't know. A Hundreds of them, deep. over a hundred, maybe getting on towards two hundred. Uh, many books have been produced this year <laughs> and released for free because we're we're crazy like that. Mm. We, we definitely are. <laughs> so what I want to do here is I want to block in or kind of loosely sketch out where major objects are. So I kind of have a sense of where the mountains go and where the sky goes and where the snow goes. Pretty friendly thing to do. And since I have a colored uh, ground here, I can actually even do it in white with my cat's tongue brush. And I'm going to bisect, if the canvas is divided in half about here, I'm going to come up a little bit from there. And I'm going to make a little line over to here. And then let's join our little mountains coming down. So I'm just looking at the reference and uh, sketching the important parts that I see. Well, let me give them their reference back. Yeah. And I'll make sure the reference that I found uh, is available to you on the website because it can be kind of hard to find this reference. And I don't think you want to give uh, Alamy like 20 bucks for it. That seems uh, crazy prices for a public domain picture. Okay. 
So you're just going to, um, I'm going to make this really big. You're just using white though. I am just using white so that you can see this and know where I'm going. So I'm about mm, three fingers from the top on both sides. I'm going to come down from here. I know I've got a little hill that comes down. I'm going to sketch that down. Now there's a really fun set of train tracks that come across here and they actually start here. And they're going to kind of vanish together here, but we don't actually have to set its final vanishing point, which is really convenient for us, let me tell you. So easy for us. Oh, That's I all see. we got to do for those. <laughs> the vanishing point is somewhere over here, and you did some perspective today. Pat yourself on the back. You're reproducing fine art. You did some perspective. You're amazing. Huh. <laughs> you truly are. Um, I will also kind of place the train, but not too, too much, just, just scale wise, because sometimes it's easy to have things get bigger mentally for us as we paint them. And then when we look at it, we'll be like, oh, oh man, that was my coffee. Oh. Coffee down. <laughs> coffee down. Oh man. I would. It's been I a just, minute. It's been. A, it... I'm going to switch to my number four round. Do you, uh. I just. You know what? When we do coffee again, it'll be fine. Coffee down. Don't drink coffee after you put paint in it. It's tempting, I know, but don't do it. So I'm going to come across here, and it's a little bit after. So if the hill comes up over here from the right, kind of steeply, I'm going to come up the tracks a good little bit and put in... Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Let's rehearse that before we do that. John was okay. giving me an idea, and I'm like, I don't know how that'll go. I'm going to rehearse <laughs> that before I even try that. I'm just doing a loose sketch. It doesn't have to be uh, perfect at this stage. Just figuring out some placement of that front little... I'm going to clear some snow out. I'll make a little round circle there for the front of the train, right? So we're just getting a sense of where is this? Yeah. Right? And we know we want a little bit of background, you know, holding the train. So it gives us an idea of how much space, even in this resized canvas, this would take up. Mm -hmm. I'm here making a little circle. It's great because back here is a uh, bunch of snow being thrown up. So you don't even have to worry about the wheels of the train. There's a lot of things about this that are kind of wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, and it'll be a little bit fun to do. So we've got this here. Kind of comes out in a little square. And then we have a little bit of the cars that are implied going to the back. Coming round the bend. It's coming around the bend. It is. Ever so gently. And again, I don't have to be... Too, I'm being a little fussy here at this stage. I'm just starting to think about what I'm doing. And then when I come come back... Oh, I thought I did my coffee again. <laughs> when I come back, I can um, kind of come in and do some more little sketching. You can also kind of tell yourself, oh, hey, I've got a little bit of a shadow that's going to come down off my hill. And it's going to also be a little bit here coming back to my train. There's some interesting little blue shadows that are going to be fun to play with in the snow. You have a, how much more sketching do you have here? I'm not sure. I, and this is it. This is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. I only use asking is because I might duck off to start the coffee. But okay. if you're here. I'm here. We're three. Right? We're three and we're going to paint the sky. The sky. Let's paint the sky. That's the um, I'm going to go ahead and use... Uh, let's, I'm going to use a little hog brush. So this is a uh, number 14 brush by Raphael. They do uh, really nice hog bristle brushes. Uh, this is our, our, our Tijini. You can find them sometimes on Amazon and online. And I'm going to begin working out the little sky color. So I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and get just a smidge of my quinacridone magenta in it. It's going to give me a very light purple hue. I'm not sure if I asked you 
Hmm. Um, do you know what size the original was? I do not. And I realized uh, today, I was like, man, I should have like gotten that. Because we are resizing. We're definitely, I don't, yes. Yeah, it's not 9 by 12. Size. Here's what I can tell you. It isn't. It isn't 9 by 12. <laughs> Or an aspect ratio that is similar. But that's okay. We can, you know, it doesn't have to be those things. I'll be right I'm back. taking, this is the altering blue, the quinacridone magenta, and the titanium white. I'm going to take it and brush it through. This is just a fun thing we get to do today because we're together. I'm just loosely brushing this across. Very expressively. You can get into the ultramarine a bit and come down at the base of the hill. You probably would have seen ultramarine and maybe an umber or some of the pigments here, but you might not have seen any of the cads. Uh, I have to remember, I don't, you may not have seen Mars Black at this point. It's very likely that the white was more of a zinc and a lead. Also, not what we work with in acrylic. So it's interesting to see those change. I am doing a dusting of blue at the base. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow over to my phthalo blue. And I'm going to make a very light very bright aqua, arctic aqua. I'm going to come here on the brush. Make sure it's not too wet on this little edge, and I'm going to dust out a little bit of that arctic aqua. Like a little strata in the sky. I like to do um, work like this every once in a while. Because different artists solve problems different ways. And then when you go back to an artist, um, you know, who was a master in their craft, and then you look at how they solve their problems, and then you have to figure it out with your modern tools, it's a learning opportunity for you. Keeps you sharp. You know, not just for art students, for everyone. So you can see we've just added a little bit of that blue to the sky to create that sort of very distant, loose kind of sky. I want to make sure that when I'm using my hog brushes that I'm keeping them very dry. It's easy for them to get a little, uh, a little bright, a little wet. Now I'm going to take a bit of my cad yellow out and my burnt sienna, mix them together. Get a ton of white into it. So it's almost like a raw sienna. And I'm going to add a little wiggling. Using the edge of the brush. My brush handle, if you'll notice, kind of is perpendicular. Almost, uh, not perpendicular, is uh, in line with the canvas. And so I kind of angle it down so more of the brush engages from the belly to the toe. To get that kind of like little rough dry brush brush stroke. That's how I get that. I don't want too much there. <clears throat> Just a little kiss of it. I can come back with a clean, damp brush. And just kind of feather this out. One of the big challenges for me, a modern artist, and just me, an artist myself, and uh, you because you're following along with me at home, will be to be as light in value because I have a tendency to want to pop contrast, I have a tendency to want to saturate value, and just landscape painters, especially plain air landscape painters, painters that paint outside, they tend to paint much more desaturated. And so that'll be an interesting balance with you guys here. Are you working on new coffee? Me? Yes. No, I'm working on the console here. Oh, okay. You just went away, so I was, I was, I was like a hopeful. Of course I'm working on coffee. What else do you think I would be doing? I don't know. Give them a step. <laughs> Let's look I? at it overhead. Take a tour around it so they can really see it. 
take a tour around okay. the sky close right. up and then uh extreme close up all right let's get focused sorry let's really see what we did there all right manage so, our expectations right see? so i'm on a very Streaky. cheap artist board this is artist loft in packs right so i'm just wanting you to see the color and the roughness of the stroke and how that is laid out yeah so we're going to do that a couple times. We're going to look close because our references are so low res out there online. Um, there's no way for you to really zoom in unless you can go and see the painting in real life. A lot of times they'll let you kind of come in and sketch artwork in real life, which is kind of interesting. Some museums will allow it. I really should upgrade that camera. Yeah? Mostly the controller. It's like I have so much vintage gear. It's kind of funny. You do have some vintage gear. That is super -de duper true. All right. Step four. Four. I kind of dug um, this snow color that we got into here. So I'm going to do it some more. Take a little of my yellow and a little of my burnt sienna. Thank you to all the star givers and yes, super chatters you. and sharers, commenters, and likers. You know, all the people that do the human things. We love it. The human things are appreciated. I'm coming on the edge of my brush here. Again, just using this brush. And I'm starting to rough in this little warm value of snow. One of the things that's very lovely about this painting is there's a cool value of snow in the shadows and then this very warm value of snow where the light is quite reflective. It's interesting how little white is in snow paintings. It's not yellow. It's warm. Although some warm yellow snow should be avoided. You can see that it's nice to have a little bit of this purple here because it does allow us to, you know, explore and think about. The cool values underneath. I'm going to brush this up the mountain just a little bit just because we're going to come down with a shadow. into the valley and we're going to add a few little shadows into the valley and I'm going to paint really up to the train just so that um, when I come back and add the train in I'm not having to add any snow in. Now I'm going to be painting kind of loose and thick and I may do kind of shorter brush strokes. apply those values. I've got my little train tracks here and I'll add a little bit of this snow value to that train track and it coming up. And then on the other side of the track, I also have a bit of this. And then I'm going to add coming out. Sometimes it is just fun to get these kind of layers in. Adding a little bit of a warmer run along here. And then more white into it. Just still that same hog brush. There's short strokes, huh? I drink with my right hand. I'm sure it is okay. And it's safe from the brush. It's got a lid. Sweeter. That's really sweet. I wasn't sure. I'll, 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 I'll. Give a little more coffee to it? Yeah, more coffee. And, and, and I'll... Right, oh, the warmth is okay. okay. The, the sugar is like quite a lot of it. So sweet. So sweet. Bring this down here. And again, this is really layer one, so we're just loosely pushing this in. Brushing in short strokes across. 
And we'll take a tour around this so you can see it as well, so you can see how rough it is. Did you go the wrong way? <sighs> Hot. And now not a sweet enough. <laughs> let's just, just let's, I'm going to break. Okay. All right. <laughs> Somewhere out there is a perfect coffee. I seem demanding. I know. I'm really not. All right, so coming around here behind this is this sort of little wonderful embankment. It curves around, right? Putting in some of those first thoughts. <laughs> Maybe I'm such a pain. Coming on an edge with a warmer little color, and I'm kind of wiggling this out. Again, some of this will be painted loosely back in, some of it will go. We'll call this a step. And um, I will test this. And then we'll take a tour close up of the brush strokes and how they look. Perfect. Brush protector. John's going to tour you around the painting um, so you can see where you're at and what you might expect it to look like. So you can see, you know, it's very rough. It's expressive. The brush strokes are short and uh, firm. Like it's leaving like thick and thin layers of paint. The canvas is popping through. There's some variance in the tonality. It's that brushy. I say this because sometimes from a distance, you can't see what the canvas really looks like. And so it feels like it's one way when it's actually another. It feels different than it is. Step five, let's add some cooler snow. Let's do that. So to get to the cooler snow, um, I don't have any cerulean or any um, uh, lapis. Uh, there's a lot of blues that I am not in possession of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix my ultramarine and my thalo blue. Half and half. And what I want is a neutral color sort of between the two. And it can have a little uh, pink in it on occasion. That's fine. I'm going to bring this back now. I might kind of reshape how I laid the snow in because I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking it's coming here a little more. And I'm going to very roughly place this in as well too. Trying to be as light on the value as I can be. Uh, loosely and expressively kind of painting that in. Just trying to get that captured in. On this day, this artist would have been probably super cold. <laughs> Most and days. very motivated to capture these scenes quickly in sketch and in study to get back to the studio to resolve these. Um, I imagine they have a lot at the museum on his process. But if you can think for a second what it must have been like to stand out in the cold. Mm -hmm. capturing the scene and there's a lot of canadian impressionists that did kind of forage into the cold you know what i will say to capture these scenes having <laughs> lived in Can canada yeah is they know how to layer they do know how to layer and I'm gonna come along here and brush downward i'm gonna change brush direction here and then john will tell you about canadian layering i'm gonna change uh -huh. brush direction and come along and the reason I do that is that the brush direction kind of implies the embankment, and so I don't want to miss that opportunity. I just, it's, I found it interesting that my love of dry, warm socks was embraced by my friends up there in a way that only Boy Scouts can understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Adding a little 
little bit of blue a couple of places so you can see we're kind of it's really great to see it come in isn't it mm -hmm. how are we liking this weird experiment today i like it well you always like it but how are you guys liking it you know this looking at um other paintings and kind of reproducing them with our modern media in a modern way you guys like that experience now I'm going to come here and. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't think this is answering your question. No, oh, but you said, hmm. So. Because it was it just this hazelnut for me. And I'm like, well, I like hazelnuts. I wonder what we're talking about. You're talking about <laughs> coffee? <laughs> I don't know. I think they're over here in the chat. I just looked over. Well, there's a 30 second delay from the time I ask it to when they oh, hear it. Yeah, that's true. So. Isabella says, I'm in Alberta. And I can layer up. Well, and this is a perfect painting for you. Because mm -hmm. this, is, this is celebrating one of your national treasures. And I think the question, is it cold in Alberta, is a very sort of <laughs> relative question. It's if like, it's not cold in Alberta, I'm going to come over a little more to my... Um, what do you define as cold? Thalo uh, green over here i mean thalo blue and do the top of this mountain if you're from with Tech a kiss of that kiss of that kind of coming through here and we'll mark that there all right so we're just laying stuff in now so we have a basic painting laid in this is this would be what i would consider kind of like an underpainting or everything sort of blocked in the beginning of the idea of the layout and where objects are going to be and how they're going to take up space. Try and make it a little bigger. Um, but that said, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it all comes together. We should do a step. Okay. Let's do a step. It's a quiet step. Quiet step. What I'm thinking is I'm going to get into a round brush. Is that what you were pondering? Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you were having a, like a. I'm going to get into a round brush and I'm going to stay a hog. The reason I like to do synthetic, I mean, hogs in reproductions is a lot of times, you know, tackle on was around. So it's a good way to get the effect of the brush stroke. I'm going to take a little of my altering blue and my burnt sienna. Make kind of a smoky blue gray. I'm on a number 10 Raphael round in hog. I'm going to go a little bluer than that. Brushing down the top of the mountain, ca capturing kind of like a little bit of a shadow feeling. Mm -hmm. When you're doing this type of work, it's important to just try to observe, you know, the painting as you see it. Sometimes you'll notice things and uh, sometimes you won't and that's okay. This is a training session for you. Not You get a great painting out of it for sure. But you're learning a lot about its process. Coming up the top here. I when like I come that. down the forward, I can kind of get more into the thalo blue. I might kind of rinse out and then come over with a damp kind of clean brush and have that make a little more sense. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. I see what you're doing there. You see what I'm doing there? I have cameras on you. You have cameras on me? Just painting in that top distant mountain. Now, overall, its value is still a little dark. So I'm going to get into my ultramarine blue and my 
say hello with a mixed mix. It can have even a little cat. And we're going to get a little more white into it. Kind of lighten up this value a bit. Notice I'm brushing down in the direction of the mountain. You can come in and get a little burnt sienna. Touch a little color there, it can be really nice. A little color here and there. Yeah. And that just kind of shows the variance that you might have in a landscape like that. Just observe. <sighs> I'm going to put out some more white, guys. We're going to use a lot of white in this painting. Painting is going to be white heavy. Mm. Black light. <laughs> For sure. Come into this little blue and maybe some of it will... Travel out from the mountain. And then I want to come here and again. Kind of bring a little blue across here because we know we've got a little... Maybe the start of a little village thought. Yeah. A little more ultramarine in there. And this is because you know these objects will cast shadows. They will affect, they'll affect everything. I'm going to really rinse out my brush and go my uh, umber my burnt sienna and my cad yellow and a lot of white again. Finding a nice value for that background color. There we go. Capture this distant little hill. Bring it back along this back mountain line. Widen it out. And curve that line there away. There's this kind of interesting curve. Lighter value back here. Just layering it in, putting in those little landscape moments, right? What you're doing. Touch into my yellow. Here at the top, I'm going to highlight it just to bring that edge up.
super cool little train. Just quiet today. I'm sorry. I'm fine, guys. I know there was some concern over in Discord that I'm okay. I'm super okay. <laughs> Sometimes you're just down key. Sometimes I am just down key. And that and, doesn't mean anything is wrong in any way. It just means like maybe I'm relaxing into the painting too. Mm -hmm. I'm misting my Stay Wet palette because even so, there are some dry conditions going on in my world and I definitely want some control over that. here and make sure that there's a bit of a bright blue coming down that mountain i really like how vibrant this painting is it's I just kind too. of really working for me a little purple here touch it a couple places give it some color Interesting. Interesting. It is interesting. All right, let's call that a step. Okay. And we'll take a tour around the canvas and see where we're at. In your safely lidded cup. In your safe, comfy little little home. Just kind of see the roughness of the brush stroke and the looseness and openness of it how the hog bristles kind of create a very expressive moment with the paint and it mixes on the canvas a little bit. That's kind of what you're looking for there. That's what you're tuning in for. Now, I am going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to use an angle brush for the next step. I don't know if we stepped yet. Yes. So oh, okay. Stepped. All right. Sorry. So the reason I'm doing this is because there's a lot of architectural lines and I do mm -hmm. want to kind of get some of these in. Um, that said, uh, I need something that is small and tidy. So I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and I might even put a little black into it. And we'll start maybe right here and say that there's something. Just little house lines that are going on out there in the snow. a little bit out. Mm -hmm. I may even have to switch to a small detail brush just to get, because it's very tiny. Tiny, tiny. And I need something that will let me go tiny, tiny. Tiny. Zoom in a little too. And we want to just kind of capture just a few bits. So like some of it can you actually capture and then some of it is, is just loosely expressed. And that's what's kind of nice. Little, little architectural shapes that could be out here. I'm going to get in a little purple. A little bit of distant thought. Now I'm going to kind of just pull them in and then I'll come back and highlight and add shadows to shape them out. 
Nice. Back here, just a little something. Little house shape back there. Yeah. And back here, we'll start again. Maybe a little more back. A little bit. And I am a little quiet, but that's because I, like you, am thinking a little. Little trees. See, I'm trying not to be, you know, interjecty. Oh, be interjecty. It's okay. Because <laughs> I know that, like, sometimes I'm like, blah, 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 blah. What about this tree? And you're like, no, oh, I didn't mean to do that. You distracted me. But that's what I do. Just I'm putting little buildings side. out there, putting little thoughts. Yeah, and we'll add some little shapes kind of going all the way back here. There'll be some distant stuff here, too. Whoops. Going all the way up there. Smudge those back with those distant. The nice thing about little villages is they just tend to have kind of a fun, sweet arrangement that happens just all on their own. You can do that too. Just touching on little buildings. Not a big deal. They're just the beginnings of little thoughts about that. Little little distant I could be a thing things. Mm -hmm. You know, I can take a little of my same set of colors and come here and just think about That little line coming up. Little blue into it. <laughs> Maybe a little touch up here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come in here and zoom in a little bit more. So. little touch of a regular shape that paints a rock right here. And then come over uh, a little bit up and above it and make a little other regular rock. Come in and get a little bit of my altering blue, my burnt sienna, my Mars black. A little bit of implication on the... Oh, I just want to put it in my coffee cup today. I don't know what is going on with me. That's why I got you the lid. All right, so I'm in there, and that's pretty good. I, I like that. I can then come through, and I can kind of get into maybe a little bit of my uh, kind of purple with my my tiny little angle. This is the Princeton Catalyst, and I was it's a quarter inch, and I was wondering if these were any good. Mm -hmm. So I was just testing it. How are you liking it? So far, okay. It is a nice, tidy little brush that can handle the uh, acrylic paint, which is really, at some point, all we really want. Mm -hmm. 
adding little touches that kind of imply what it could be. Little, little roof lines, right? Distant little thoughts of roof lines over this and kind of desaturated a little bit. I want it to be there. I just don't want it to be so bright because it, it just wouldn't be as bright. Maybe a little bit more white. No, and a uh, uh, couple of places where there was some light. Let me come over to the oh, phthalo blue. So again, just playing with our modern colors to get kind of an interesting... Old timey feel. No rinse out. I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue blue. Come along this track. Then I'm gonna go into my brown. Maybe a little of my yellow. Can I come along the top to sort of highlight it? Isn't that nice? Gives it a little shape. And then we're going to come back with some snow, which is going to make these kind of disappear in a couple places. So that'll be fascinating. Now I can take my cad yellow and my cad red and I can make an orange. Get some brown involved in that. And then a little white. Come out here and kind of paint the fronts of maybe the houses a little bit. And the roof lines add some little upward strokes to kind of represent loose, distant plants. Building that out. Little red and white and yellow. Capture the front of some of the buildings. We're just touching small amounts. A lot more yellow in my brush. And get some white. A little touch of the side of the buildings, right? Down the center of that, give it a highlight. And interestingly enough, I'll come into my ultramarine blue. Mm -hmm. Should do the sides. Just a little bit loose. A 
Now while I'm here, I'm going to get into my ultramarine blue. Maybe even a little of my quinacro magenta. Mm -hmm. There. And some white. Let's add some shadow. I needed some shadow. A little bit. A little bit between these buildings, you know, a little bit of shadow. Because that's what happens out there, you know. back with a little bit of snow and I'm just painting it loosely. Little highlights in the village here and there. Because perhaps, you know, a little sun caught it. Top of a roof. Just little bits, a little bit of a village, mm. takes a village. While we're here, I'll add a little of that gold to the top of my tracks a couple of places. I'm going to come into my orange and brown. Oh, that's so orange. Mm. I'm going to kind of highlight the rock in a couple of places. There we go. Let's call that a step because we're just putting it in. We're yeah. just getting in there so fast. We're just working it out. So we learned a little bit about the emphasizing details that are in the distance and just using sharp lines to create that sense of architecture. Right. Um, when you're painting something like I know this original painting would be bigger than this and we're shrinking it down smaller. You do add some difficulty to your journey because, you know, when you work a bigger canvas, it's easier to put small details in. As you work a smaller canvas, it's more challenging to put little details in. So that's just something to know that you're going through that it's very normal to go through. Mm. Now, mm. if you were wanting to finger paint, would... Have fun with that. <laughs> You could really do that. That's just a, another brush, huh? Yeah. Um, so we have a couple finger painting lessons. Um, there are some safety tips and some things to be aware of when you finger paint. Uh, in my playlist on finger painting, I even include famous artist Iris Scott and some other resources to help you enjoy that. And I think I have about five finger mm -hmm. painting focused lessons. We really kind of go over it so you can learn all about it and get that core set of skills down and then go out and do more of it. It's fun. It is just another brush. A nice smudgy brush at that. And sometimes we all need a smudgy brush, right? It's true. Sometimes we all need a smudgy brush. Do we have the next step? Uh, yeah, we already stepped. Okay. So let's add a little detailing up here. I've got my brown. Oh, they wanted to see the village, though. Just zoomed in. Oh, zoom in. Zoom in all over the village. I'll do that real quick. A hot, messy see. village that it is. You want to see that? Oh, like, ooh, there's the village. Shh. It's up close. It's just little, little angles, little highlights, little moments. Little moments. All right. Just going through there, seeing it all. Have a little all village. Right. We're having little fun. Village. Yeah. We're having fun. And we can do this every once in a while if you guys like it. If you guys like reproducing impressionistic paintings and you'd like to every once in a while hit an old master uh, with a fresh take, let me know in the comments below. Like, not just if you'd like to do it, but whose painting you'd like to do. If you have one in mind. You don't have to do that. It's just a thought. I'm not one of those YouTubers who's like, I'm going to give you a quiz, so comment. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to give you a prize. <laughs> Seriously. If I'm going to have you come in for a metric, I do a giveaway. But other than that, I am asking you questions because I just want to know the answers. 
Now here I've got some different little interesting stuff going on, and I've got a little fence line that I get to work on. A fence line. So I'm going to take my uh, yellow and red again and kind of get that peachy color that we did. Make a straight line there because that will feel like something man-made. Mm. You know what? I put that too up close. <laughs> I just made that go away. And you can do that. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in the idea that there's maybe some fence posts here. I'll come back with things, you know, using value and other things to really play in what that is. I'm going to go into my blue. Tap one side of that little log there. little blue there. Go right into that. Makes an interesting little gray mix. Fascinating. Back into my blue. And then I can come through and there's some nice little snow here that's in shadow. So I can just. Say, oh, well, this caused the snow to be in shadow right there. I'm going to come back with my little brush and I'm going to get into my original snow color. If I need it to, you know, just paint a little paint and be right on the toe. Get some more of that here. It's even fun to pick up a little bit of the cat and put some of that peach into the snow, get it a little bit colorful, even as we have it going forward. Maybe a little bit of that light comes closer to the track. I don't know why I'm saying maybe, because it's like in the painting. <laughs> it's, well, we don't know. It's it in the change. reference. It could change. It, it probably will because we're not copy machines. Right? It's okay if it changes. It's okay if yours changes. I'm getting over into my two blues and I'm going to. Hmm. It's a good question here. Hmm. I love answering a good question. So they were asking me if I could rotate the camera so the side view doesn't have such an angle on it. And so when I look over your shoulder, it kind of does this. And it's because the way that our our camera is angled to that. So um, the answer is yes, I can. I just have to think about it for a moment. It's adding a little bit of value in there. A little spots. And I'm going to add a little bit of value here coming down. A little highlight of the shadow. It's still in the shadow range, but it's kind of highlighted. And it's okay. have some snow really up close to the track or over the track. On this uh, left-hand side track. 
What's wrong? Uh, you're doing your thing so you can scoot around me and uh, change the position of the camera in real time. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to look right now. I'm adding little highlights to the top of this. Yeah, you know, um, if you guys have feedback and suggestions and it's actionable, we'll take it. We'll take it. Sometimes it's not actionable, like it's not possible for us, but if it is, we'll take it. So come back and see if we change that camera angle. Well, I, can, I can do it virtually, so I can't physically do it, but what I can do is I can grab that input and just go, just blow it. But let's see what we can do. Adding a little bit of kind of interesting blue to that. All righty. Let's get a little bit of my aqua here and we're going to rotate that around come on this right hand side of this okay. uh snow and shadow it's going to be floating in the void for you guys so you have to kind of till i get my bearings adding a little bit of that there i'm just kind of enjoying this this is super there fun for me let's try that you have to you're looking into the void a bit because i don't have quite the same I have to learn how to control it now. It's all my bearings are all. Yeah, the bearings are all what? <laughs> Which way is up? Sometimes that's hard though. We're just adding a. Actually, I think that needs to be a little darker. Sometimes we add a little value in the snow. little purple on this side kind of creating a little bit of high low with it as you do or i do certainly and i can come back over with like a damp brush and work that out put a little lilac up here on the hill which is just really nice because that's just a little quinacridone mixed into the brush with a bit of white and then it really pops this part of of the snow. Pop, put it a couple places, even over here. You just want to make sure that your snow is colorful, because it is. Snow reflects everything around it: every color, every value, every shade, every hue, everything. So it's one of those rare opportunities where you get to play. I'm going to grab a little of my blue. Kind of add a little of that dimensionality there. Little white highlight in it. And you can always come in and put a little shadow down there. And the rocks certainly have shadows. And then we can even put a couple little shadowed rocks up on that hill. Shadowed rocks. Shadowed rocks. What color there? <laughs> no, I th I feel like what we're actually going to see here is that the side of the hill will be more steeply curved down. And then we'll have quite a lot of train hmm. afoot. Lots of train bands. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of train afoot there. So we just want to keep track of where that is. I want to get a little of the white into my... Uh, keep track. <laughs> da -da -da and I wasn't even trying to be that right there. I'm adding a little highlight to the rock. Sometimes I like to just hit it with a little highlight. Oh. Little pops of brighter color can be... Pretty engaging. Hmm. 
I'm rather liking that quite a lot. Come along here with maybe that ultramarine blue because it's such a nice deep blue. Start to define that space. Okay, let's call a step. Mm. Let's take any questions that we have. Oh, you know what? No. I have not gone. You want to take some questions from before you get some steps? Live show. Uh, here we go. Choo -choo. Why is John so quiet? What's us? Don't know. Uh, Rotate the surface. Was, was the good. Christmas train last year or earlier? I think it was two years ago. Was the Christmas train was two years ago, I believe. Mm. And then if you're painting a rooster and I watch you, then I paint a different I of yours. Is that copying? No, if it's different, then it's not copying. I was just entertainment on in the background. So if you watch me and you just take a technique or um, some sort of process in the painting, like, oh, I'm going to paint my feathers like that, but it's a different rooster, then it's it's an original painting. Um, and that's one of those things that's hard... Uh, you know, to, to reconcile how we do those originals. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ambient Landscapes, is it possible I can start the live video at the beginning and leave the live chat going? Yes, it's really useful to do that. Thank you, Sue Cole. Where can I we buy round hog brushes in sets, please? So Jerry's Art Aroma has some really great collections where it's like a bunch of the creative uh, Mark Pro Strokes in hog. Um, and they're really kind of a deal and can become a really good deal over the holidays. Uh, the, the art, this particular brand is really wonderful, but it's in the higher price point. They do have sets of these. A lot of the collections, if you know the brand of brush, they'll be like all the rounds or all the brights or a mix of rounds and brights. And you can expect to be anywhere in from, if you can find a sale at Jerry's and it's like maybe even $20 all the way up to about 70 for a good set mm -hmm. of, of hog. Um, but they last a while if you take care of them. All right. Oh, wait. So what YT Girl Attack 08 asks is, which of your tutorials could be finger painted apart from the finger painted ones? <laughs> Anyone you want, really. So what I would say is if it doesn't have a huge amount of details, like any of the florals or abstracts or any of that where the details are not super specific, you should be able to go through and do it without any difficulty. Yeah, probably. Is anyone else missing whiskers of positive things under the painting? I still do them. Uh, yeah, I got to get back to that. Um, Melissa, I got to get back to all my roots. Um, sometimes you get so busy in the, the work of day-to-day -day life, you forget to stay true to the core of who you are. Mm. And uh, there's so much pressure uh, on us as creators and teachers to, you know, uh, adapt and change. And I'm, I'm just like pretty much going to just go back to what I do is what it's going to be. I'm just going to go back to do what I do. I will do experimentation because it's fun. Um, but just back to those core things. And then, hey, Hope Healer says you're doing a great job. Thank you, Heather C. And uh, Cinnamon and John, are you planning on visiting Florida in 2022? No, I'm not currently having any well, booked plans for Florida in 2022 yet. There could be some recreational plans. Like I might go to Disneyland. Yeah. See what the world does. I think it's actually going to get better. I honestly, um, you know, we've got the retreat coming up with my mom in um, uh, the week before Mother's Day next year and with the new treatments in the hospital. And, you know, I think I think the rhythm is happening. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. It's just my opinion based on everything I'm seeing. I'm giving no advice to anybody at all. Mm -hmm. You do you. I'm going to do me. But my feeling is that things are getting better. 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 So... <sighs> am I dry brushing the highlights, says Maria. Yes, I am dry brushing highlights. Mm. Hi, Maria. Powered by coffee. So the train. <laughs> no, Jan, no. Jan's like, John, cinnamon, don't get burnt out. I don't think that's the problem. I think it's like, we just, I think that we get frustrated we can't make enough of the stuff that we want to make. <sighs> 
and like the gnomes like i got oh, the man. astronomes and i couldn't get them caught up i mean i am gonna get them caught up but it's stuff like that like um and you know everyone's always like you know uh on to the next big thing so then you've got to you go through those interesting moments where you've got to question yourself like that's been in my journey lately like like you know am i still teaching something that's relevant or has that passed me by <sighs> but then so, i just okay. realized i love teaching so i do it anyways enough like, about your I've personal painted... art journey sure but tell the people where this painting came from oh this is a painting by tim uh, not tim gay clarence gagnon tim gagnon is a youtuber clarence gagnon <laughs> who's a fra- he's a canadian impressionist so if this looks like it came from europe it's because it's from Canada, which is America's Europe. Don't say that. Canada isn't anybody's anything. Canada is its own thing. Why do you got to start problems? Because I don't know why he's got to start I problems. Just, I want to start an international fight with our art friends in the north. I don't want to have a fight. I want to. I want to come over and have like, you know, poutine and. And a little, a uh, little timbits, and See, just have a very nice time. And I don't want to have a fight with you. That is John. You can just take him to the hockey rink and work it out with him. Right. I don't want to be part of that. I just want to go take a walk when, with my bear bell. All right. The hockey thing. I'm gonna add a little snow, kind of coming. I'm dry brushing a little snow over oh. the tracks here, also to make sure that, you know, the tracks feel a little buried. Mm. Mm. I think that was needing to be a blue track, so I'm gonna come back and. Look at that. Just add a little blue to it, and it's a blue track. So we're also kind of adding some of that to that. The train. I'm going to get into little brushes, detail brushes, whatever control I can get. Now, as you guys know, if you paint with me for a minute, things that are mechanical are a challenge for me, but I do not let it stop me. So I'm not going to let it stop me today. That's what's happening. I'm going to get my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to attempt. The scoop is what's going to get me. I can promise you right now it's going to, the death of me is in the scoop. So there's nothing I think in, in any of my Canadian friends would not uh, settle over a, an apology box of Timbits. Like that could make the world better. True that. There's like, oh, you brought Timbits? It's okay. It's all right. As long as you come with Timbits. So I'm going to put in my front little kind of guard here, little train guard, because snow gets on it. So this little train thing is kind of clearing the snow. So it comes to each side of the track, and it's got a bit of a curve. And it's kind of like an open book that's pointed down. Again, like not for nothing perspective, not my friend. For, mecha- for like cars and trains and but I what I've realized being on YouTube I would have avoided this as an artist in the past but now on YouTube I just don't that's what you guys taught me is just do it anyways so I'm gonna make a little dot at the front of the train I'm very excited to paint the smoke Like super excited to paint the smoke. Coming from the top of the train, going back a little bit is sort of like the engine. Jan would like to know what's a timbit. Oh, so we have Dunkin' Donuts in the United States. Canadians have uh, Tim Hortons. That's, that's so. It's so. Timbits are to donuts as Tim Horton is relative to starbucks in in america with coffee they have elevated donut holes to an art form that one could only consider masterwork so so some people have feelings that are that strong i'm gonna grab a little black (laughs) you know and that's just really person by person (laughs) if you have that strong of a feeling around it all right, so I kind of had that beginning of the train kind of coming in, and I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my Mars black and a bit of my round brush, and I'm going to paint up from the bottom this very dark value because there's also got to be snow here, guys. 
The snow comes up, right? Nancy says, yes. Mike says, you, you speak the truth. They're from, uh, let's see, uh, Nancy's on Vancouver Island. We never made, did we ever make it out to the island? No, and it's a, one of my big regrets because we lived in Vancouver and we were in uh, Port Coquitlam where the serial killer used to be. And uh, <laughs> There was more to poke I mean, than... yeah, Gabe's, but I mean, it really was down to did you eat at the barbecue? That was like a whole thing in town. <laughs> so <laughs> my favorite thing. They put a subdivision on it, like Polder Guys style. I was like oh, waiting all man. the time for that moment. I was like, is the static on? Is the static on? Is the static on? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> fine. <laughs> you don't need to worry about me. So, uh, we meant to get out there and do some of the really cool things. Like they had that whole foraging and eat thing and that the island is so gorgeous. And we kept meaning to go and go and then... We didn't get to go before we had to leave. And I get to come back because my daughter is Canadian. Yeah, neither I had her in the hospital there. Neither Cinnamon and I are Canadian. Uh, I was up there working and uh, had a pretty cool job up there doing some gaming stuff. And then uh, we had a kid there. We did. Bella. She we has did. the prettiest birth certificate. You've ever seen it. It has it steals. Really is. <laughs> It's really And then I got a little travel one. It's super easy. Let me tell you what's not easy. Reporting a birth. Nope. That's what's not easy. And that is where we failed. So um <laughs> More on story our... for another day. That's right, yeah. We're gonna do some nice puffy clouds coming back. Puffy clouds. We're still on the same step, yeah. Mm, let's we can give it a new step because we did a little bit of work there and then they can catch up to that. This let's, could be yeah. the step ten. Step yeah, and then we're gonna come and do some um thing. Can you meet me for a second? Mute me. I can do that. Oh, you. mute you. Hold on a second. Do do. I think you're muted. You're gonna sip. Hold on a second. I can make you disappear too. Shh, shh. What you doing? You sipping your coffee? I'm making you. Oh, you just had a little clear your throat thing. I'm gonna make you disappear for that, so you have a little privacy. You ready? There's your. Oh, but that's a big you. You get look. It's you and you. It's redundant you. It's... Woo! Woo! Da, 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 da. Which oh my gosh. Hey, do you want to stay here for? Uh, 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 you know what's cool though? Is uh, I can do all sorts uh, of crazy stuff uh, with you while you're uh, like redundant. Uh, 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 I can even do color correction. Uh, Look at that. This is what happens when you give. This is when I get that comment. Your hair is a crazy color and you're very distracting. Like Cinnamon and I. Am honestly, I? Really? You were given this technology and. Uh, uh, we no, use it. We so just, there. You're like, what are we? Oh, no, you went the little you now. Okay. Yeah, I got a little you mean. I'm going to do some little smoke coming up here. I'm going to, interestingly enough, begin with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta. Right back to the seriousness. Just bang. Just yes. Right well, I'm not, I'm not like too serious about my art, but like I, I recognize, you know, we do have to like teach a painting in the amount of time that we'll we're get back here. to it. So I'm going to sort of uh, make some little loose, brushy strokes here. It's just to begin, and it kind of comes up, really spreads out here, and then travels back all the way back the painting. So that's what I'm trying to find is the travel back all the way the painting. And I'm going to use my round brush again. Very cool. You got to have some hogs in your kit, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very scruffy little round dry brushing. Sometimes I like to add a little more round to it there we go the beginning of the smoke isn't that stunning mm -hmm. oh, you must be so you must be so like very excited so I'm gonna take a little of my uh, <laughs> I'm a little having trouble with my motion there so sorry. Oh, I'm gonna add a little ultramarine blue into that mix I'm on the toe of the brush. Right now I'm going to just kind of capture the form and flow and shape of things. We'll worry about the shading in a second. Just coming on the brush saying, hey, what do I see here? 
how does this kind of feel? And then when I have that, then I can come put, you know, other stuff in. I'm wondering if I can make my floating void hmm? color. See the background, the void, it's black. Yeah. I wonder if I can make the void another ah, color. That's fine. Do you guys mind the void? No, I'm sure they don't. But I was just sitting here going, hmm, I wonder what I can do about the void. Is there an option for the void? Void colors. Let me just kind of bring this in. Right, this first sort of, oh, we got some shapes here, right? On the toe of the brush. Just dancing the little toe. Toe of the brush. Toe of the, toe brush. the brush. Toe of the brush, toe of the brush, toe of the brush. Get into a little bit of my blue. Toe of the brush. Kind of shading the underneath of the smokestack with the blue. Interesting way to go, you know, just a little smokestack with the blue. Mm. Got the under shading there. Let's get a little of our burnt umber. Kind of a little Mars black going and uh, kind of bright. It's kind of really sooty, right? Mm -hmm. Is the smoke sooty? No. Yeah, it's a little sooty. It has some in it. And again, toe with a brush. Not dissimilar from what you've got to deal with when you do clouds, guys. Right? And at which point everyone went, oh, no. Because clouds feel intimidating. Put all my blue up in there. And... Building up, rinse out. Make a little bit of kind of an orange. Coming to sort of highlight some of the smoke. I know, seems surprising, but it is what we're doing. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm hmm. Okay. What I'm doing. I mean, you guys can do something different at home. But that's my, what I'm doing. My whole job is to question what you're doing. Is it? I think so. I feel like we need to redefine your job. Maybe it's to ask questions. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do. So we had a little highlight to that, right? We're getting a little highlight going there. And get a little bit of my yellow kind of going. Come back into a little gray. But you never thought of smoke being this colorful. Mm -hmm. Just on the toe of the brush. on the toe of the brush little smoke coming out of a train mm -hmm. I like the front of the puffs again you just never know
Go back into my black. Back in black. Making little little defined areas. Might rinse my brush out and just get on a damp towel and kind of work out some of the smoke. Sometimes I'll come back and paint in little pops of blue sky. Could be coming through. Our smoke has come off. Come out that way a little bit. So the train has a little puffet. Because it's got puffets, guys. Hmm. You didn't even know you were getting into this, did you? Well, it was sort of part of that part of it. I like them. I like the the, the nature of this. You know, and you could spend uh, this artist spent the most time, and you can see it in t in this part of the painting. It was the most time intensive. Coming back with blue. Mm -hmm. Shading that up. There we go. I feel like I'm pretty happy with that. Hey. That's as much time as I want to spend on it anyway. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say thank you to Lynn and all the firefighters out there. Oh, we have firefighters oh. today? Oh, maybe Actually, she's a I fighter. haven't. Huh? Oh, I misread that. I think she, I think she said she's a fighter. <laughs> I thought she said she's a firefighter. Well, like, still, oh, that well, stands first responders. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for all the first responders. Whatever made us think that we need to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe it's the smoke. It's the smoke. Now we got to paint a little bit of details on the train because it has a little bit of details and it's actually pretty sketchy. So that's rather lovely. I am excited that you it's just, not going to be that hard. You just step. Mm -hmm. Step in. Step in. It's step you guys step like up. learning how to paint a little puffy smoke? And again, you just spend more time, more time, more time, more time. You could use my little dome blender. If you have a teeny tiny dome blender, that would be perfect. You know, I think now I want to get into that. I like want to do a whole painting on like smoke coming out of a train. Not the whole train, just the smoke coming out. Just the like an stack. hour of smoke coming out. That's really cool. Yeah, I think to get all the way where I'd want to get, I need to put about an hour of smoke in the train. Hmm. You know? Man, that seemed like pretty good smoke there for just, like, I don't know. A few minutes. A few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, impressionism. So, <laughs> got a general... Mm. Now, just real quick before mm. we go on, Victoria wanted to make sure... You could use a synthetic brush, but you're just looking for something that's got that fizzy end. Yeah. Really. It doesn't matter the bristle. It just is, or whether just it's Just looking for that. The filament. You're just looking for that wild haired tip. I am. All right. Carry on, Sherpa. All right. I'm going to get into my uh, snow color again just real fast. Make sure I got a little pops of that on the snow because that was really nice and I like that. It had a couple little little areas and I missed them and I wanted to put them in. So that was me. All right, I'm going to make a little bit of my orange. I'm going to take my cad red and my cad yellow. Can you meet me again, babe? Mm, yes, I probably could. I can even probably make you disappear. You're disappeared and muted so that if you're going to sneeze or cough or just have a personal time moment, you can, because you know what? It's live, and I get to, like, push buttons and do stuff. So, do to do Yep, I know you're okay now, but now I control the mute. Hold on. Let me get you back. Boop, boop, boop. You want to see? I can let you come back. I was. Now that we're back. I'm going to take a little bit of my kind of 
cad red and cad yellow and add a little bit of uh, some of these little plates up front. All those little metal plates. Mm hmm They do stuff. Letting the blue kind of show through. Sometimes I get into the brown. Come around the outside. Now in the center of this, there is this little guy. So I'm going to want to reserve that. Hmm. It's reserved. Oh, darn it. I got into my orange, which I didn't want to do. So I'll have to put back a little blue later. Come here and add a little kind of orangey red to the front of that. A little bit. A little bit back here on the back of the train. Maybe a little pop there. And a little bit of a kiss of that color right there. And a little forward track there. Now, I'm going to take a little blue and brown, more blue, and come over here and start to paint this front little snow pusher. Very pushy, this one. Mm. It, it, it could be a shover. It could be a shover. You know. I'm going to grab a little bit of white and get a little... This kind of bright highlight right here. Come along here and highlight that. Some robots like to push. Some robots like to shove. I'm going to put a little kind of snow out there. Okay, I go a little more orange in here. Maybe a little bit of a dot starting there. I'm going to have to make a little of my cool snow color. Add a little purple to it. And this is the snow that's kind of like stuck there. The stuck snow. There's just a little bit there. Get a little of my black and brown. And make sure that that is kind of also on the train. Mm -hmm. Can I get a little version of it again? Put little bits of it on there. It's little moments. Get into my detailing brushes. Make it orange. Get the yellow. Let's pot there. Highlight. Trying to capture little bits of where the highlights might be. Oh, 
Yeah, the I'm a little browner on the front, I think. What were you saying? Boop, boop. I just want to make sure the reference photo is up. I just want to making, I'm making sure all my buttons have been pushed. All my <laughs> buttons are in the right order. They seem correct. A little red where it needs to be. A little blue and white here, mostly blue. Come along here. Go out, shadow out. Catching the blue everywhere I can. Mm -hmm. Not trying to be too specific because, you know, impressionism. <laughs> Add a little highlight to the too much of a highlight, so I'll knock it back a bit. There we go. So just a little bit of a highlight to that. Making sure that's looking nice. excited with anything you just always come back and kind of tone it back tone it back if you need to i'm going to get back into this little brush here and i'm going to make sure i'm going to take a little of my thalo blue and my altering blue maybe even a little of my mars black into it because we want a very deep value i don't have any indigo or prussian So I want to make sure that I have a good devalue. Devalue. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a little highlight right there? Maybe Hard another little it. one there. It's not too much, right? Yep. Make sure it's got some. So you're just... Put, trying to impression the train in. You're putting some shape that might be train shape. Might be train. Like they might be giants. It might be a train. Like you don't know. It's a train. It's got some snow and it's it's sooty and snowy and dark and you can't see, so there. <laughs> I mean, sure. <sighs> Now, what are you going to do, right? You can take your little brush here. On the toe. Uh. Not a lot of water. This was fun. It is. Come there. I don't want to go too far up the train because I don't want to lose all of it. Mm -hmm. Back into the phthalo blue and some titanium white. What? Build a little birdhouse in my cow catcher? <laughs> okay. It's a joke from 1990. I mean, it really is. 
you know, I still have my original CD that I purchased in 1990. So I'm just trying to say that that snow is kind of coming out there. In my car. It has been through many, many, many cars. But that CD has stayed with me. It really has. That would be the, they might be giants, flood. <laughs> you know, almost every song on there is still apropos today. It's true. More so even sometimes. Mm, scarily. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, man, we need a little bit. Of oh, goodness. Let's, now let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, look. We spent it's a little a time and we painted a little train scene in the snow. I'm not unhappy with that. Not at all. Learned a lot. Did you learn a lot? I learned some stuff. I think we got really into how, you know, this was maybe constructed and um, where it's done. I'll, again, make sure that uh, Clarence Gagnon's, the one I found, is on the website where you can find it and mine also, so you can use for reference. Let's go ahead and grab a signature brush, which is just this detail brush here, the number one oh, detail. Yeah. How am I doing? Let me know. Good. I look, I have the... Uh... The rotating angle camera over here now. My virtual zoomy. So it's actually it's it's a full. What it is is I have um, a bunch of really cool broadcast hardware, so I can, uh, I can do pretty much anything I want with any input I want, and route it to any other service that's inside this building. Look at that, guys. It's just kind of cool. We just painted a little bit today, <laughs> and we needed to. It was a fun day, and we did a fun painting, and we painted a train. And, and here's the thing, like, I have no idea what a turn of the century train looks like. So, you know, getting to spend some time, I'll spend some time painting the train. I wonder if I can make more Because I'm weird or up thumb because I'm awesome. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. Um, hit the subscribe button if you think learning how to paint like this is fun. I've been doing it for a while. A lot of resources that are even hard to see on any of the platforms, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or wherever else you're watching us. We have Instagram, TikTok, Discord, Pinterest, and Facebook. So all the places, you, and also Twitter, but all the places that you are, we are. So there's always free art education happening everywhere. So Follow me in all your favorite social media and you might see more weird stuff from me. Like if you're on TikTok, you've got a video of Shortcake just recently. Mm -hmm. In a palette. I, a palette. Gave I gifted it to you. Okay. Do we have anything, questions before we pop out? Because we're here. I, uh, let's I'll go, go to the, the thing. I'll go to the, the thing. Cinnamon still believe this is a two hoot. <laughs> or is this a hoot and a half? Is I think a, this is two and a half hoot. Two and a half. Could be moving up to three. Uh, you know, impressionistic paintings, didn't, and we talk about this a lot, is like they look like they're one thing when you get into them, and then in the middle of them you're like, oh, ow, ow. It's like just discovering the water is deeper than you think. So I might, here's what, I'm going to rate it two hoot, and you guys rate it in, on the website, your rating. And because I let you guys argue with me on the website, so you can say, oh, no, it's harder than that, or, oh, no, it's easier than that. And that lets another person see how hard it was for you. Um, Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Check out the patronage at theartshirt.com forward slash patron. Um, check out our calendar forward slash calendar forward slash all the stuff at our website. It's cool, and you should check out. I want to thank Anne Marie Pratt for your generous donation, and I would like to answer Victoria C. I would say this is still pretty deeply in impressionism. Um, realism would have required me to get T Square Ruler out and really think about a couple more things. Deeper, <laughs> deeper than I had to here, but I got to just give kind of a an expression or impression of the moment. I didn't have to get so deep into all of those elements. Um, and you can always have little elements like. In this particular painting that he did, there was a lot of realism in the smoke, but everything else was very impressionistic. So I think sometimes those things sort of meld together. Mm -hmm. um, good morning from Australia, says Leanne Yates. I can't say your last name, Leanne Yates. Uh, good morning from Australia. Is there any style you enjoy to paint more than any other?
I really like it when it can be very loose and expressive. Like when I'm doing daily paintings and I kind of uh, back out of the moments and just kind of drop it down. But I have to be honest, like sometimes I want to tighten up and really explore some details. Um, I love being abstracted. It's a hard, like if you're commercially an artist, you have to pick one. Mm -hmm. If you, if you work in this business, you've got to pick one and you kind of have a look and people need to know it's you. And there's a whole business aspect to that. That is very determining for artists, right? Like if you look at what Thomas Kincaid did before he became Thomas Kincaid, he had a lot more variety in his work. Um, but what happens is you get into a commercial space, even if you're in a gallery and in that commercial space, people like the guy who taped the, the, did the, I never remember his name. He did the banana taped to the wall. I have it on the video. Oh yeah. I don't remember. And the gold name. toilet and all that. We, we don't expect him to do a bust in marble. We just, you know, if we expect him to tape fruit to a wall from now into perpetuity. Um, and we expect realists to paint realism and it's just, there's a commercial expectation, but I think in what I get to do on YouTube because I'm teaching and I'm teaching styles, I'm teaching concepts. I get to kind of follow my bliss in my art. Um, so, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I I'm kidding. Right. I don't know what the question is. I'm kidding. Right. Uh, it's more context to that. <laughs> what am I kidding about? I'm kidding about everything. That's right. We don't take much seriously here. I mean, I, Look, art is, art is serious, right? But it's not. Even when you're seriously working in art, mm. it's not. It's one of the blessings of this. Like, if you're doing a heart surgery, there's no part of that I think that's particularly lighthearted and fancy <laughs> for you. I imagine you could correct me if you're a heart surgeon, but I imagine you're pretty focused on what you're doing, trying to find parts of the body and rehook up parts of the body and hold a person's heart in your hand and try to keep them alive. Seems like a very focused, intense thing. And, and the pass fail rate of that seems very upsetting. Whereas if I blow a painting, there's another painting. It's just very low pressure, even professionally. Um, I can make it high pressure on myself. I can certainly apply that pressure to myself, but that's an abstract construct that I, I go, I, I, I put on myself. It's not something that I have to have. I can choose to have that or not. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you ever do any drawings? Uh, uh, oh, am I going to do drawings to win on the retreat? So they're uh, in the posting. It'll tell you uh, when we're going to do the announcement of who won um, and let you guys know. I'm pretty excited about that. We are giving away one ticket, not transportation, just the, the full inclusive artist ticket to the retreats. That would be the hotel and food and everything. You have to get yourself there. We'll pick you up from the airport. Like, you know, you get all the things. Um, and I'm excited that we're doing that. So be sure and enter if it's outside of your budget. But you think you can get yourself there. Um, we provide the art supplies and we feed you nonstop. So it's a bit like Bernie Man. If you can make it, we got you. This is, this is we got true. you. Hmm? I, don't, I don't know that allergy, analogy, but okay. Well, because you could go to Burning Man and you could have just like nothing on you in between barter and trade and people just taking care of other people. You could eat and drink and be okay and sleep. We got you. I think we're going to do a better job. Than All that. right. Better than that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to make you sleep that, on the playa. I'm, I'm not saying that there's not a whole great experience there, but ours is a little more air conditioned than that. Uh, yeah, so it's fun. I would do both. This is definitely much more comfort oriented than the playa. <laughs> yeah, we're more about comfort and snacks. <laughs> That's snacks. snacks. Lots of snacks. snacks. All the, there was a surprising number of snacks, snacks on the playa. playa. I know. Yeah. Sure. All right. So anyway. We should all do a Sherpa Sherpa event at Burning Man. How weird oh, would man. that be? I it would you guys want to go? Weirdest. Although I okay, here's you the thing. Go? We don't know. It's like it's like it changes every year, so we don't really know what we're asking to get into there. We don't even know, but we could all it's, go. It would just be sort of like... And meet up there. What the, That would be the craziest meetup I, I think ever. I, I, it would be, yes, for sure. But we got we to, gotta, we gotta like, not this year. Maybe not next this year. year. Well, well, it's we'll, already gone. Come on. No, no, but I mean like in the next 20, 20, 12 months, I don't think we, we have too much on our plate. 
Okay. Well, that's John's answer on that. I'm going to say that right now. Um, going, well, if you guys, uh, I see Kim is where can we register to win? Uh, that the you would be there's instructions on the website where the ticket is, and if my moderators can drop some links to you guys to help you find that. Uh, thank you, C. Blanton. I they will guide you to where you enter and help you know how to win. Uh, Lynn says, "Love you, uh, Cinnamon, and happy holidays to you and family." And I would like to say to you guys. Um, Happy holiday and happy winter season for you as well, or summer, depending on where you are, kind of in a way. So some people have some summer. And, and yeah, if you if you don't know what Burning Man is, you can Google it. And oh yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole um, thing. But uh, yeah, it's a also like, whole we, thing. We could, they would totally be up for doing something in the Poconos too. Oh yeah, the Poconos is comfort based. Burning Man is 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 like explode your brain and open your consciousness. And make you reconsider your position in reality and be without hot. taking anything you could but in, without in a, taking anything to do it you, you're there huh? in a very very hot place it's a playa you want stay hydrated hot. <laughs> it's very stay hot hydrated. it's a all right hot be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at an easel really soon Bye bye